I just show you how the welcome route was working with Inertia. Now we're going to do this for the chirp page. So instead of a response here, we're going to have the Inertia response. We're going to remove this and instead have Inertia's version of response. So we need to delete this and update it with the Inertia version, Inertia column column render, and then we're going to create a file that matches that. So let me copy that and I'm going to return that. There's an empty array here, but this is where we're going to pass our data, which is going to be, you guessed it, the list of chirps. So if I save this and try to visit slash chirps, we will likely have an error. Let's try refresh. And yeah, you can see that it's not finding the pages chirps index. So let's go in our resources JavaScript pages. And just like we have dashboard and welcome, we're going to create a new page called chirps.jsx. This part, I'm going to skip forward and copy the whole thing. If you're a JavaScript developer, this is the part you're comfortable with. Let's paste it in and then look at what it does. So I've created that new file. I'm going to save it. And maybe before we look at the code, let's try refresh our slash chirps route now. And it still doesn't work. Oh, and you know what? I know why, because it's not chirps.jsx. It's actually chirps slash index.jsx. And woo, look at this, it hot reloaded uh, the UI. So we have this input field and then this submit button. Of course, it does nothing yet because we haven't wired that up, but we have the whole UI here. So let's look at what we have in this template. We import React, we import this authenticated layout, which is a component or a layout component. And then we have this nice, what I was mentioning before, this components for primary button input error. And finally, this really nice use form hook from Inertia that we're going to use a lot. That gives us really, really cool stuff. Uh, stuff like processing, which is if you use Remix, they have this uh, state while the form is submitting, you have this processing equals true that you can use to display a loading spinner, uh, form reset errors, all these nice helpers. And we set the form to an empty message string by default. And then when we submit the form, you can see here we'll have a form and with on submit, we're going to run the submit action. You can see that we're posting the form to this route. This is the route helper. So we're going to have a post request to chirps.store, which is referring to our chirps controller and then the store function here. So basically we're going to post the form here and receive it. You can see the request where we're going to receive the form data. And here we can do whatever you need to do to persist the data. And if the post request successfully happens, then we can reset the form to clear out the message fields to write the next chirp. The rest is Tailwind classes. We have a text area. Uh, you can see here the input error component that will display an error if there is an error. We'll have some validation for empty or too long strings, and I'll show you that in a second. That's pretty nice, isn't it? Next step, we're going to add a navigation menu to go straight to the chirps. So just next to our dashboard link, we're going to add this nav link that goes to the chirps. Here we have dashboard, we're going to add a second link here in the nav. That happens in our authenticated layout. Here we have a nav link, and I'm going to add another nav link that goes to chirps. And again, notice this route helper, we go chirps.index, this is the named route. We don't have to manually hard code the path, it kind of knows how to find this route. And then if the current route is that route, it's going to set it as active, which is used to style the link differently. So now you can see we have this chirps uh, link, and when I go to it, the route matches the route name, and so it becomes active, and same for the dashboard. So we have a lot of nice stuff coming for us with very little effort. And now where things are getting cool, we're going to persist a new chirp in the database. Like I've shown you, we're posting to the chirps that store controller function. So we're going to update that controller function. What we're going to do is validate the form by checking that the message is required. It's a string and it's a max length of 255 characters. So we creating a validated variable that checks this and we grab the user and then we say this user has chirps and we want to create a new one with this form that has been validated. And then we redirect to chirps.index, which is the list of all the chirps. Let's do the changes. So we're going to use that redirect response in the chirps controller. Let's uh, use this redirect response. And for our store function, this is going to be a redirect response. And here I will copy the whole thing that I've just described to you. 
So let's save that. All right, so let's create a relationship. Uh, you see, we go request user and then chirps. And we're going to create a has many relationship because a user can and will have many chirps. Just like on Twitter, you have more than one tweet per person, but each tweet only belongs to one uh, user. We're going to update our user model this time and create this has many relationship by adding a function called chirps that's on the user model. It's going to make a has many relationship to the chirp class. Let's go to the user model. I'm going to add this has many and down here, here somewhere, let's go public function user, which is has many. And look at this. So many people are doing the tutorial that uh, Copilot knows exactly what I'm trying to do. So we're going to create a has many relationship on the chirp class. Now, let me check that this is correct because sometimes Copilot does a slightly deviated stuff. This is very useful reading about uh, the vulnerabilities of mass assignments. When you submit a form, you don't necessarily want to submit all the form fields because there might be a password field or is admin stuff that you don't want someone to be able to change the value and submit and make themselves a super admin. So there is this protected thing, fillable. And basically it means the only fields that you can mass assign is the message field. So we're going to add this to our chirp model which was created when we scaffolded the model. We haven't touched that file yet. I will add here a fillable value of message, which means we can only fill message. And if I did not add this by default, it would not let me assign it. We need to update a migration because we need to create this relationship with the user and the chirp. So in our create chirps table, let me show it to you quickly, create chirps. We just have an ID and a timestamp on our chirps table blueprint. And we want to add a foreign ID, which is the relationship to the user ID. So each chirp will have a user ID, which points to the primary key, which is the ID of the user model. And then we want our message. So I'll copy these two lines. And basically I'll say, hey, uh, chirps table, you need to have a message, which is a string. And you also need to have this pointer to the primary key in the user's table. This right there is a uh, cascade on delete is a pretty nice feature. So if you delete the user on the user table, you don't want to retain that chirp that belongs to now no one because the user has been deleted. So if you delete the user, it will cascade and also delete that message that is kind of bound to it with this relationship. So it's a nice uh, garbage collection sort of like hygiene where you don't end up with records that don't match anything in your database. And right now we haven't migrated the database uh, since adding this migration. So we need to run migrate. Just before I do, let me show you if I refresh, this is our database as of now. We have a user table with just me. Uh, we don't have yet a chirp stable. PHP artisan migrate. Now notice that when you migrate, so let's run this and you can see it created a new table. And if we look at this table, refresh, here's our chirps and you can see it has it's unique, which is the primary key ID, and then a reference to user ID and our message. So this is exactly what we want. 